uh, Umar, what do you make of this? Because at the end of the day, Labour is supposed to be entitled to make these legitimate calls based on civil action, the necessary pressure from pressure groupings, and then the general sentiments of the people about how this is a, not only a public health issue, an environmental disaster, and then a policy failure. At the end of the day, the president says he wants time because he's already taken a number of actions. Another interministerial committee has been put in place. Isn't the president legitimate in, in these demands and appeals to organized labor? Umar. Roland, I listened to Tonto. And he says that you cannot ban legal mining because these are responsible people doing responsible work. During the time of COVID, I'm a responsible citizen mm. who was doing carpentry. I was told to stay at home and not work because people have the tendency of dying. I willingly obliged. Thousands of Ghanaians in this country who had businesses who were running had to shut down and lose money because there is a greater good we are all looking to try to solve. What's your point with this? My point with this is that when you have a situation where you are risking 30 million plus of your own people, for which those people you claim are doing responsible mining would require amongst that 30 million people to come to work and to be able to work in that mine for them to be able to generate any form of money. You're telling us that we should allow it to go knowing very well that when it gets out of hand, these workers that they would even require to work would not be fit for purpose. What have you solved? So you're refraining to solving a problem you can solve now, but you're willing to risk those same mining companies if in the next five, 10 years, they can't even find hardworking people to come and work because they are ill and probably lying down and doing dialysis. Mm. It doesn't make any sense. But again, I want to start today's presentation by laying a certain foundation. Which I will. And I want to congratulate the Catholic Church for that act that they have decided to do on the 11th of October. It's, it's a, a prayer walk. session. It's a prayer session, yes. But they are taking a walk you know, against, you know, Galamse. I would want to call on the office of the National Chief Imam and all the other offices that are underneath it, the Ahmadiyya Muslim, the Sunni Muslims, my dad's office. I'd like to call on them this morning to make the Muslim community and make an official announcement to allow us to join the Catholics on the 11th So now it's going October. to be interdenominational? It has That's to be. That's your call now? It has to be. It has to be. I'm calling on the office of the National Chief Imam to allow us to all follow. Do you know why? Because when it gets to times like this, mm. what is required now is to pray and get up and fight. You know, you count on God and then you get up to fight. Because certainly we have certain persons that it is difficult to reason with them. Exceedingly difficult to reason with them. You're telling me that it is okay that you risk my life. It is okay that my eight-year-old daughter, who is having to go to school, and Birim having to serve wager, and my taps being opened constantly on a daily basis, and my kids having to drink cyanide and mercury because the Ghana Water Company doesn't have what it takes to take out mercury and cyanide from the water. You're telling me it is okay to allow my daughter to continue to drink that because the president that we made president says that give me a little bit more of time. It doesn't make any sense. What doesn't make sense? The president called for the time. It doesn't make sense. Or the actions that he's... Well, so listen to this. So Labour gave you one month. You sat down for one month. Gave you another announcement to do a nationwide demonstration or a nationwide strike in 10 days. You now call them and say, come and let's discuss the issue of timing. Mm. Have you thought about the fact that when Labour mentioned that we're giving you one month, if the president had placed a ban... A month ago, maybe we would make progress by now. 
it is the disrespect, the lack of. And then I'm told that somebody, you know, somebody somewhere, the, 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 most even, the, the, the one that is even more annoying is that, oh, there are some NDC persons who are, who are you know, like Tinto is saying, who are making this thing even worse. What, what that is, saying? no, when what you say that, no, no, NDC I'm coming. Here. He hasn't when mentioned you, this year, to be fair. I'm coming. When you indicate that all political parties, we have to sit down and go and blah, blah, blah. Okay. Well, and you said some, some NDC people who think Kweku Boahin. Is it Kweku Boahin? Yes, yes, yes. That was a 20. Yes, yes, yes. Those yes. videos, I've seen two already. Yes, yeah. yes, 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 yes. Well, and so. Even yesterday, Dr. Albin called to yes, react. Yes, to yes, yes, yes. Mm. So let's say, fine, fine, fine. NDC for your bomb. We don't know anything. We're not smart. We're not intelligent. Let's say, you say you have all the wisdom, you have the intelligence, you have the people, you have the men. It's been given to you. You're telling me, or any other MPP person is telling me, that it is okay to allow, for instance, John Dramani Mahama to decide to go to a certain village, catch people and be murdering them, and they will say, oh, he's an opposition leader. We can't touch him. Ridiculous. Whether it is Boahim, whether it is NDC, whether it is John Mahama who is mining, whoever is mining in the water, for as long as it is risking our life, you are a coward and you are irresponsible to sit down when you have been given the mandate to deal with the situation. Certainly, it doesn't have any wisdom. So you are saying that even the opposition member, if you know that they are, go and arrest them because you have the enforcement powers. Roland, when you're coming to work, you drive, right? You, 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 you're supposed to wear a seatbelt, right? It is your life, right? You can decide not to wear it, no? True. Why does the government decide to arrest you for not wearing a seatbelt, which will kill you? Because I risk my life and the lives of others on the road. So the government decides to protect you even against your own will. That is what the Constitution is. <laughs> The Constitution is supposed to protect us against our will. That is why the Constitution will tell you that when you have a daughter who is 80 years old, she has to be in school. She's not supposed to stand by the streets and be selling. Even though she's your daughter, you give it to her. That is why if you took your daughter and you put her on the floor and you decide to be stabbing her in bits and pieces, it will still catch you because even though she's your daughter, you give it to her and you paid your bills. She has the right to live. So it is irresponsible. Even if you say, in fact, it makes you even more, excuse me to say, unwise to say that there are some people who are fooling it, but those people are NDC and they are the ones that are making it worse. What is the use of the military given to you? What is the use of the police given to you? What is the use of all these persons given to you? So when, when we're going out for demonstration, you can marshal thousands of police officers and security services to stop us from saying, don't kill us. But you can't stop a place like this one we're looking at right here this morning. What the you video. Showed to us, the video that you just showed. Open you place. Open place. By the roadside. Osino. By the roadside. Everywhere. By the roadside. Behind police stations. You can't stop it. You still need to be given a little time to go and sit down and think about it. Maybe if the president would agree to move into one of our villages, deprive himself of all the opportunities that he has, himself, his wife, his children, who are also benefiting from the same mining, move into one of the villages, live there without pure water, without water, and his wife and kids would have to come out with this water and drink from it, perhaps he would think twice. Hold on. For the MPP, mem for the MPP sympathizers, people like Tonto, and I respect them, MPP sympathizers, people like Tonto, people like all these other persons who feel that, oh, we can't even speak to it. We have to toe the line of the president. When the president is going back home, when the president is going back home, he doesn't even recognize you. You say you go and vote for him. He doesn't even recognize you. He doesn't even know you. He doesn't know your mom. He doesn't know your dad. He would go home and has enough to import water. You will struggle in your hustles and you would have to watch your kids go to Kolebu and can't even find renal services to be given to them. This is not something to talk about. Stop it. Let's move. Stop it. No one is saying when you stop it, we're not saying ban illegal mining for the rest of uh, Ban legal mining for life. Why? When you did, you know, a lockdown, it was for life. No. Stop. There's a problem. Stop first. Everybody stop. When you stop, when you've done it before, when you stop, then now come, let's see it. Let's see the situation. Let's try and solve it. You can't see reason in this. What do you want us to tell you? 